you, Barb. It's good to have you back. Let us join in the call to worship. Turn to Christ. Place your trust in God. Lean into the Spirit. Our opening hymn, number 140.
number 741. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. How long, O people, shall my honor suffer shame? Be know that the Lord has set apart the righteous as God's own. sin. Offer right sacrifices. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. The scripture lesson this morning is from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do you doubt? Arise in your hearts. Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands, his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, 
and that his repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name of all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are to witness these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our affirmation this morning, number 889. There is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. Are there any names you would like to add to our prayer list listed in the bulletin this morning? Let us pray together. O God of miracles and truth, Bless us as we gather this morning for worship with the power of the Holy Spirit. Reveal your presence in our midst and open our hearts and minds to receive your miraculous love. Strengthen our faith this day that we may go forth as witnesses of your miraculous love. Let us this morning turn to you. If our heart is heavy, let us invite Christ to lighten the load. If our hearts are hardened, may the Spirit soften and change us. Truly, we all need to receive God's grace, and we need to, he to heed Christ's call. This we pray in the name of him who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. that you would like to make this morning. Well, thank you, Doris, and it's great to have you back this, today. Thank you. There will be a short garden meeting uh, after church um, today. Might be a little bit like at 11 o'clock. So, thank you. We now ask our ushers to come forward that we may receive our offering.
winds flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. pray. O generous God of love and grace, bless these gifts with your abundant love and your life-giving grace. Bless us as we bear witness to your love in all that we say, all that we give, and all that we do. Amen. Please be seated for our second hymn this morning, number 474. I still remember today the very first time my grandparents took me to a funeral home. It started me thinking about life and death and what faith really means. Until we know what death means, we cannot really appreciate resurrection. Jesus did know about death. No matter how many people he cured, even the three people that he raised from the dead, all of them would die someday. Jesus himself prayed that the cup of suffering and death would pass him by, but accepted them according to his Father's will. His agony in the garden showed the realization of the pain of death. He knew how it would hurt his mother and test his disciples' faith. His death was real, and so one day will be ours. When Jesus appeared in the upper room speaking peace to fearful hearts, 
he was also talking to you and me. He was trying to prove that his death was real. Look at the wounds in his hands and feet. Notice the panic and bewilderment of the disciples. Remember the grief of the women at the tomb. That's why they thought he was a ghost. Now ghosts are spirits of the dead, but they have not been raised to new life. Haunted houses and ghost stories are fine for Halloween, but we really don't want them in our everyday life. Life has troubles enough. In that upper room, the very first day of the week, was one man who had recognized Jesus walking on water when the other disciples thought he was a ghost. This man had denied knowing his friend and his friend's hour of need. This time Peter was convinced that Jesus was alive and was really in their midst. When Jesus told them, thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Peter stood up and accepted the commission. Our first reading records Peter's preaching to the people who had seen Jesus die, who had shouted for the release of Barabbas, who had turned their backs on Jesus. With conviction in his voice, with compassion for their sins, with courage in the history of their ancient faith, Peter called for repentance, for conversion. He knew this would not be an easy message to preach. He did it anyway, to prove that his friend was truly alive, Jesus Christ. The first letter of John was written to a Christian community, that's you and me. Like Peter, John knows about sin and sinners. The community has recognized that believers can also sin. Now the emphasis is on how Jesus continues to advocate for us before the Father. We are not lost in our sins. Not only did Jesus die for us while we were yet sinners, he continues to redeem you and me. He plans to do that for all time, even our time. John and Peter could say that they knew Jesus. We can claim that same closeness by living the commandments, especially his command to love God and one another. I believe we truly can know Jesus because he continues to appear after the resurrection for 40 days throughout Jerusalem, at Emmaus and in Galilee, and across the centuries in our backyards. The early gospel writers recounted as many appearances as they could. Jesus proved to them that he had risen. What does he have to do to convince us? Jesus continues to appear in surprising places even today. In the quiet moments of prayer, in the beauty of a sunrise, in a child's first cry of life, in a beloved's last breath. We can find him in the power of Bible study and the liturgy of the word, opening our minds to understand the scripture. Jesus appears in the breaking of bread at our kitchen table and at the table of Holy Communion. He shows us his hands and feet when he walks with us, when he carries you, when he comforts you. He invites us to touch him so that we may believe and become his hands and feet. We too live in a world of sinfulness and pain. Death catches us unaware and squeezes our heart. Aunts and uncles, parents and children, unexpectedly or so painfully leave us behind on this earth. We still need the repentance and forgiveness of sins promised by Jesus and the resurrection that brings eternal life. Jesus is not a ghostly apparition from some distant time. He stands among us this morning in our closed upper rooms, blessing us with peace, asking us to be his witnesses. 
As the author of life, he wants his name to be inscribed on our hearts, on our hands and feet, so that the whole world will be filled with alleluias. I would suggest this morning that you keep your eyes open for Jesus Christ. He keeps appearing for those who have faith in the resurrection and for all of us who so desperately need the resurrection. Amen. Let us join in our closing hymn, number 2108. You are witnesses of God's love. You are witnesses of Christ's life. You are witnesses of the power of the Holy Spirit. Go forth now as witnesses of the blessings of our God. Amen.